How you guys doing? This is Martin. You know me from a series on how to give up Starbucks, go 30, how to pay off your call in 36 months without giving up Starbucks or being cheap. Or did you watch, you read my little article about three things that porn stores, porn stores and sex stores do that Macy's couldn't. Now you have like a, a billion dollar company cannot just have someone work at the cashier. That was tip number one. Number two, set the intention. Like when you come in there to a porn store to say, hey, you only have 20 minutes. You're not just gonna wander around and like, yeah, I'll come up and ask you, hey, sir, have you found something that you're looking for? Is there something I can get? Oh, something's on my face. Oh, is there something I can get you? And then number three, to get the money. Like if you go to, I remember I told you, like I told you about my stories when I went to Macy's, I had to wait for about 10 minutes. I was buying like almost over $150. I had three shirts, buying the underwear, all kind of stuff. I had to wait 10 minutes from this guy to come over who was arranging shirts. It's like, you could do that during a slow period. It was me and other people online. He's messing with the shirts. I mean, and you wonder why so many businesses are failing. Or did you read my, listen to what I had my rant about lead generators, how the so-called closers, hey, the leads are bad. I called him up and he doesn't want to do business with me. Fire the leads, follow the appointment center, get better leads. No, if you knew how to close, the late, you can late, at least follow up, but no. During the good times, these so-called closers, everything went well. But now when they have to work a little harder, they're like, oh, get the lease. I mean, I had companies interview me two and three times for a commission job. Well, sometimes we get the leads and the person doesn't show up and we don't know what to do. And I'm just listening to them. I even have one company. Okay, we want you to get to distressed property. This is the price range. Go to it. I'm like... Why don't I set the appointment? I can give them a price range based on that. And then you're going to have to give them the final thing to push them over to the edge. Talk about the loan stuff. I mean, the loan, interest, credit. What will? Because even if they get that, what happens if the investor backs out? What happens if the investor looks at my price and says, I'm not going to pay that? And what happens? The contract just dies. So when the contract dies, who's going to call back that person and tell them, hey, we offered this for your house. The investor changed his mind and he doesn't want to renegotiate. He wants to walk away. What do you think? They don't do any of that. And you wonder why houses just sit. People discount houses. New houses get built. And then you have these people who have been in house for 30, 40 years thinking, oh, I'm going to get a good price. On a house. I'm going to get the $500,000 house from our $40 house that's been depreciated by the IRS. It's going to be the high, same house as the, price of the new houses across the street. We're going to be rich. No, 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 no. I mean, just people are delusional, man. So that's my rant. So number one rant, porn. Retail number two rant all these so-called closers. Oh, we got great closers Well, if you're are you a great follow-up closer because if you were gonna close you don't necessarily have to close today Can you close tomorrow? Can you close 30 days from now? Can you close 60 days from now? Can you bring us some referrals while you're waiting on that to close? So I mean though you saw like what is it three million people got hired be rest assured half of them if you're only type of sales business or gener sales generation business where you're depending on someone in the office to try to close who hasn't actually been on the phone and call you're gonna have a it, it's gonna it's gonna have your um it's gonna be bad and then all, all these people were thinking hey i'm gonna make money like the housing prices are going to down. Oh, I'm going to go out and buy a house. Where are you going to go out and buy a house, huh? Or do you know how to keep calling a person on the phone? Or are you just going to discount the price? What kind of house are you going to buy? People need to sell. Trust me. There's like almost a billion dollars in forbearance. And I'm saying if your house goes in forbearance, say you tack the loan on in the, at the end of the year or whatever, after the end of the lease, then how are you going to pay for the money going forward? Could pay for the lease going forward. See? There's a lot of like ambiguity, like the marketplace, it makes no sense. There will be a boom, the investors will buy property, but it's not going to be as fast as you think. Because even after that boom comes happens, some people will be like me, you'll buy a duplex and stuff. And they, hey, I'll live in a back unit and then I'll have a person in the front unit. No, you'll hate that person in the front unit. Take it from me. I did it. I did it. It's like, they do bizarre stuff. I got in trouble with code enforcement. 
And you got to buy that duplex in a good place or get you a Section 8 tenant. And you're going to have to watch them constantly. I don't care if they're black, white, orange. Otherwise, you have to be in a nice area with people bringing in money and hope that person stays there. Do not buy duplexes in low-income area unless you want to be a slumlord or you want to find some people who want to sell drugs and you're just going to leave them there till the city or state finally comes in and just gets rid of them or closes you down. You just, it's fine and you take the loss. So just because you hear people say, I'm going to buy a fourplex, I'm going to buy a sixplex. It's not that easy. The, buying it is the easy part. Renting it out and making sure you have the money to hold it in case the tenants move out, that's the hard part. So that's why you, if you listen to Grant, you listen to other realtors that say you have to like buy great properties. The, basically, it's the truth. The, the um, buy is actually made on the sale. When you buy that duplex, you better buy that duplex at like 100. You got to buy about 100, 110. Turn around, you can rent it out for like 1,000. Maybe six to seven hundred, depending on the area. One thousand divided by twelve, and you put ten per ten thousand down, so you're looking at like six hundred dollars. So you gotta buy it in the hundred ten dollar range. If you're gonna buy a fourplex, same thing. You can't pay over. Yeah, I mean, how much in this economy are you gonna charge a person more than thousand dollars? It depends on the area, right? If Seth and San Bernardino Redlands, none of the students students are there's online training. You have people who maybe work at Amazon. They're making fifteen dollars an hour times forty. That's six hundred times four is twenty-four hundred. After taxes, that's eighteen hundred dollars a month. So if I'm charging them a thousand dollars and they're paying four, three, or four hundred for their car because they want to have a nice car, that leaves them like for four dollars, four hundred and sixty-four dollars. Eating. <laughs> $200 easy to eat a month. Easy, trust me. And then they left for 164 They still haven't paid their car insurance. Still haven't paid for that. You see? So the kind of job that you want to support your place, you got to pay attention to all that. There's no students. So you're not going to get any students moving in for the next, at least next three or four months. Now that the, the Cal State's already said, oh, we're not going to have all online training. So no student's going to sign a lease in August if they know they're not going to even need it. So it's like all this, you have all this stuff that's going to impact your property. So I just think, sell, if you have a house, I would just sell it to an investor. I, honestly, I would just get out of the housing business, retreat for a while, figure out what's going to happen with the economy. Because... 30 million people are out of work. I'm on the phone now calling for credit repair. And I know I got to get strict on people because they sign up on it in a moment. But they, hey, I can't help if you lost, you lost your job. You're already on paying your bills. Get into a program where we can at least get some of the bad, the existing bad debt off your bill and see what we can do to help you out. Raise your credit. If not, you're going to pay fifteen, thirty thousand more for a loan because they're going to charge you more. Hey, when you go in for that new car and you have bad credit, they're going to charge you more interest. So you're paying even a car. It doesn't. You just pay even if a car is two percent interest. No, no. You're, even if they say the car amount is this, when they turn around and finance you, that's how they're going to make your money. So today's thing is like. If you have a car, well, I told you, $25, $75, $125. Get that car paid off. Do you know the average used car is $354 for 60 months? And the average new car is 72 months to pay it off at $554? If you could just pay off three to four months of that car, like I told you, pay off your smaller bills like I'm doing. My car payment is $354. I'm adding an extra $40. 40 times 12 is $480. That's one month of payments. Over five years, that's five months in payment. So instead of paying my car off in 60 months, I paid it off in 55 months. The car is not fully depreciated. I can take it to the dealer as a down payment and get a better car. Turn around. Let's look at the new car, $554. You're going to have to pay more than an extra $60 a month. Because 60 times 12 is 720 times 5. That's five months of payment, say, paying an extra 40 a month or so. Minus 72, that leaves you with 65. The IRS depreciates a car at 60 months. So you, the car is useless. So if you try to take a 72-month car loan into a dealer, you're not going to get anything. You may get a dollar, thousand, you may get 2000 But if you have bad credit, they're going to turn around and do it, do it on the other end when they finance you. 
So if you have bad credit, instead of getting three and a half percent, turn around and bid five and a half percent on some whatever loan, you're paying more money to finance a loan. See? And the IRS has already depreciated it. So you don't want to keep a car more than 60 months that's not paid off. And then it's just a junker and you don't care and you can sell it for parts and get something. So get those programs. Pete Martin Morris, P.O. Box 540, San Bernardino, California, 92402. Martin Morris, P.O. Box 540, San Bernardino, California, 92402. Send me a check. If you want, send me a money order. Let's get that done for you. It's important. You do not want to keep a car loan on, you do not want to keep a car loan more than 60 months. So don't do it. And also I have one program, 197, 397, 697. Do it. Talk to you later.